Aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic hydrocarbons are compounds that contain benzene. The chemical formula of benzene is C6H6. So that's a structure that you want to become quite comfortable with. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and draw a structure that has six carbons, six hydrogens. All carbon atoms have a stable octet and each of the six hydrogens are stable with two electrons. So when you've puzzled through that for a couple of minutes, uh, compare your answer by starting the video again. Okay, so hopefully you've figured out that there's some kind of ring structure going on because definitely we are short hydrogens if we're trying to draw this structure as a straight chain hydrocarbon. So as you continue to place bonds, you realize that with only single bonds, the carbons are still not stable and hence we needed to go with alternating single and double bonds. Now there is an error in one of my diagrams. Do you want to have a look through and see if you can spot that? Okay, hopefully you noticed that it was the first diagram here and that um, this carbon right here wasn't stable and in fact a double bond needed to be here and a single bond up in this location. Alright, so now each carbon has a stable octet and we see alternating double and single bonds. The symbolism that I've drawn with the red sorry, I'll just circle in a red here, this arrow here, that refers to, uh, that indicates resonance structures. So although we haven't got into our structure unit, that's unit two, resonance structures are uh, different forms of the same molecule that we can draw where the true structure is a blend or hybrid of, of the resonance structures. So does benzene actually have alternating single and double bonds? No, it doesn't. In fact, experimental data supports that each carbon-carbon bond in benzene is actually the same length, and therefore it's somewhere in between a single and a double bond. We don't have a notation, though, to communicate that, and so we show the uh, two resonance structures to suggest that the true stru structure is actually a blend of both of these. Now, when we go to draw benzene, Sometimes it's helpful to draw those alternating single and double bonds, but especially if you're trying to see the, the stable octet. But really, what's truly happening is that those electrons in the double bonds are actually spread around the ring equally. We say delocalized. And so it's very common to represent the structure of benzene as a hexagon, so that six-sided figure, with a circle inside. And the circle is meant to uh, suggest the delocalization or spreading of those electrons around the ring. So I'll just write that word out, delocalization, okay, of electrons. And that's what actually brings chemical stability to benzene. We haven't discussed reactions yet of the hydrocarbons, but we will. And I'll revisit this idea of um, stability in the benzene ring when we cover those reactions. So today we're really focused on the naming and drawing of the structures. And I think when you know how to name it, you'll know how to draw it. So we're gonna build on all of the principles we've been learning. And really for naming benzene, just need to have it in your mind that benzene is either the parent, the parent chain or the parent hydrocarbon, or it's going to be the substituent. And if it is the side group, if it is the substituent, then you need to call it phenyl. I know it might make more sense to think of that as benzyl, but in fact, it is phenyl. Okay, so there's various examples here. Oops. Various examples here, and you may want to take a moment to jot these down and, and then try them yourself. They're going to follow perhaps pretty much the rules that you're expecting. Just remember that benzene is the parent if there is one or more side groups. And if you only have one side group and it contains a double or triple bond, then 
certainly where the double or triple bond is will be the parent. Okay, so working then on question A. We can see the benzene ring and the methyl side group. So take a moment, jot down what you think the name is, and then check the video. Okay, so the answer to question A then is methyl benzene. Now, if you put a one in front and said one methyl benzene, ask yourself if that one is really necessary. If 30 people were to draw methyl benzene, wouldn't they just put a CH3 off of one of the six carbons? And really, that would be the same structure regardless of which carbon they picked. Think of building the model and tossing it to someone, and however they catch it, maybe the methyl looks like it's on the left as opposed to the right or up, up or down. But really, they could turn it around in their hands and make it look like it just did when you tossed it to them. Okay, trying part B. Pause the video and do that one and then check the answer. Okay, I forgot to mention for part A there that the common name of methylbenzene is toluene. So, just for your information. Okay, part B. You name the structure as a benzene with a side group, and we notice that the side group has three carbons attached to the parent chain, the benzene ring, off of the second carbon. And so that's setting up the isopropyl arrangement, or propan 2 il And so the name of part B, propan 2 il benzene, or isopropyl benzene. Okay, give C and D a shot. You'll notice that there are two side groups. And so, uh, yes, we will need to number the location of the side groups. Okay, so in part C, we could number clockwise as I did from the top carbon and find our methyl groups off of one and two. Or I could have started with this carbon in green is carbon number one, but then I would have had to number counterclockwise. So either way, red or green, you're going to come up with 1,2-dimethylbenzene. Now in part D here, we have two side groups, the chloro group and the methyl group. And I'll just redraw it here so that it doesn't get too crowded over there, but if I had started numbering here, then I could have moved counterclockwise around the structure. And this would have set me up with one methyl and two chloral. But the combinations then of numbers, one, two. When I look at the red numbering here, again the combinations are one, two. But they're not the same name. If I do follow the red, it's one chloro, two methylbenzene. If I follow the green, it would be two chloro, 1-methylbenzene. And so because the numbering is the same in either direction, just like before, we break the tie by making sure that the lower alpha side group has the lower number. Hence the C went with the 1. So just to repeat that, numbering in either direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, put both substituents off of 1 and 2, whether we numbered counterclockwise or clockwise. And so we to break that tie, we chose to give the chloro, because C comes before M in methyl, we chose to give the chloro the lower possible number. Okay, now classically, we had before, so the before the IUPAC rules where we were using 1 and 2, or 1, 3, or 1, 4, we had side groups um, when they were identical, uh, we used words, prefixes, ortho, meta, and para to indicate their position. So the ortho arrangement was always the 1-2. When we had identical subs substituents, they were attached off carbons 1 and 2. And the meta matched 1-3. The para matched 1-4. And so you can see here that we have substituents off 1 and 2. We've done this one already, 1,2-dimethylbenzene. And so that could also be known as ortho or O-dimethylbenzene. Really read that, ortho. So when you look at F and think of the numbering here, if I start there, then I'm looking at 1,3-dimethylbenzene. 
So 1,3-dimethylbenzene could also have been called meta because meta is the 1,3 arrangement. So meta-dimethylbenzene. Okay, so try the next question. You'll notice again, identical substituents. So that matters. You can only use the ortho, meta, and para for benzene and its derivatives, meaning compounds containing benzene. And so you'll see in G that there are two side groups and they're both chloro. So you could use an ortho, meta, or para here. So which one would you choose? Hopefully you're thinking of para because this is the one four. And so in fact, this one could be called para dichlorobenzene. And if you check out a container of mothballs, it would actually have that label as opposed to the one four dichlorobenzene. Okay, in H and I, you'll notice that I have three substituents. And so the trick here is really to figure out the numbering properly. We're definitely naming these as benzenes. And the question is just, get the lowest possible number combination for those side groups. So pause the video, try them yourself, and then check in. So you really had to pick a starting point trying to get the lowest possible number combination. So I've started with the carbon where the chlorine's attached and ran counterclockwise, and that gave me side groups off of 1, 2, and 4 which is the lowest combination that I could find. Other options were 1, 3, 4, if I started with the carbon where the fluorine is, or perhaps 1, 2, and 5, but again, 1, 2, 4 was the lowest possible combination. And so the bromos with 2, the chloros with 1, and the fluoros with 4. So 2 bromo, 1 chloro, 4 fluoro, benzene. Try question I. Okay, so again, it turned out one, two, four, but this time I am moving clockwise around the benzene ring. I have identical side groups at carbons one and four. Those are methyl groups. And then I have an ethyl group off of carbon two. E comes before M, and so I sequence the ethyl first in the name. Two ethyl, one, four, dimethyl benzene. All right, so you'll notice in J that there is a hydrocarbon side group, but in fact, it's more than six carbons. So typically, if your side group gets to be, you know, five, six, um, seven carbons, certainly six or more, um, it might be, you know, more common just to name it as an alkane with benzene as a side group. And so if I number the carbons of the parent chain to make the side group, the benzene ring, the lowest possible number, then I'll need to number from right to left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so in fact, that puts the benzene ring as the side group, which if you remember earlier in your notes, the name of benzene as a side group is called phenyl. And so this is three phenyl heptane. Okay, just a few here for fun. Check out this structure here. Whoops, sorry about that. Check out this structure here. And think of the classical. So not one, two, but what else? How classically, how might we have referred to those one, two side groups? Are you thinking ortho? Okay, and then think about someone after their master's does their PhD. Orthodox. Okay, corny chemistry jokes, I know. How about the next one? Paradox? Yep, 1 4 is paradox. Okay, I'll leave you to figure out the last two here for fun. Now, I want to do the two last examples with you. So questions K and L. Um, I haven't done one yet where there's benzene with a double or triple bond. So here I'm going to throw benzene 
at you with what looks like a side group initially, but then as soon as you realize that there's a double bond there, that means that the double bond has to be part of the parent chain. So we've got two carbons in this double bond and we'll number to make sure the benzene side group has the lowest possible number. Now that means we're definitely numbering from left to right here. So we have a phenyl group attached to ethene. Now do we need to number where that one side group is coming off of the ethene? No, because if someone was to draw phenyl ethene and they chose to draw the double bond like this and then put the phenyl group off of the carbon on the right, well, we would have just numbered that as carbon number one, two. So really, phenyl ethene, definitely the one side group, the phenyl group is coming off of carbon one. Okay, and last question is perhaps a little bit more complicated. So let's see how this goes. H3C, single bonded to a carbon, triple bonded to a carbon, single bonded to CH2 with a bromine, which is single bonded to CH2 with a benzene ring. So, Decide how you're going to name this. Are you going to name this as an alkyne with side groups, or are you going to name this as a benzene with side groups? So decide whether benzene is a side group here or the parent. Okay, because of the presence of the triple bond, I hope you decided that the triple bond must be in the parent chain, and therefore we're definitely going to run this set of carbons as the parent, which means we have a bromo side group and a phenyl side group. Now with regards to priority, the functional group that's present is the triple bond. So you have to ask yourself between the triple bond, the phenyl and the bromo group, which gets the highest priority? And to be very clear, double or triple bonds are higher in priority than alkyl groups, which would be like your methyl, ethyl, propyls, etc. Halo groups, which would be your halogens, and phenyl groups. So all of the alkyl, halo, and phenyl side groups are all treated equally. When you're trying to figure out the numbering, it's trying to get the lowest possible number combination, but if you have a double or triple bond, right away, number to give that triple bond the lowest possible number. So we'll go ahead and finish this one up. Okay, I hope you pause the video to try to figure that out. Now as I go ahead to number the carbons, I'm definitely going to start at the left side because that will give the triple bond the lowest possible number. It's coming between two and three, which means it'll definitely have the number two uh, as opposed to numbering from the right. And so I'm building a five carbon alkyne here with the, with the triple bond after carbon two, so pent two ine. And now I see there's a four bromo and a five phenyl. So I look alphabetically, B comes before P, and so I can sequence the bromo first. So four bromo, five phenyl, pent two ine. And that's it. So I'll see you tomorrow.